All right, thank you all for attending. Um, the agenda is outlined here. We've got uh, three promotions to go through today. Uh, we also wanted to kind of briefly discuss one other aspect, which I think I'm going to I'm going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about before we get to the promotion items uh, because I think it's important, and, and I want Alyssa to be here for that. Um, any new folks on the call today? I don't believe so. No. Okay. Um, so before we get to the promotions, um, there was an ask for due diligence to uh, review the entirety of the, uh, the current spec. Uh, this is going to be a fairly lengthy uh, endeavor, uh, and it will involve looking at the documentation for the one dot, well, I guess the combination of 1.5 and what we've done for 1.6 so far. Um, the current documentation is around 300 and some odd pages. Uh, it'll probably be close to around 360, 370 by the time we're done. Um, the, the ask is that, again, for due diligence purposes, that we go through all the existing documentation, um, or, reference source code when applicable. Um, and uh, that way we really have a true understanding and grasp of the entirety of the specification that we are then going to uh, recommend for approve or for uh, um, uh, to the executive co committee uh, for, for standardization. So realistically, this is a three to five day ask to go through all the existing docs uh, likely five to six hours per day. Uh, we don't have to schedule it, obviously, all at once. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I can't dedicate an entire week to doing this. <laughs> um, but if we start breaking it up, um, you know, a week here or a day here, a day there, uh, I think we can um, I think we can achieve this before, what would be asked, uh, mid-April-ish? Mid Correct. It's so the executive committee meets on April 24th, in which you propose this. You also have a 60 day period where you want it for review. So you actually want to um, uh, freeze the document. So ideally between now and um, a March, middle of March, you want to okay. be able to find five days. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. Um, um, we should probably put out a um, a, a doodle uh, for everyone so that we can try to get as, as much consensus um, as possible in terms of what times and dates uh, work for folks. So Alyssa, uh, you and I can kind of work together on, uh, on getting that out uh, to people. Um, any questions on on kind of what the ask is? I think there's a question. Well, well I want to make a comment. Uh, as one of the people who is kind of uh, pushing for this, uh, I think it's important that we have a, a shared understanding of the of the group and that the TC as a as as a body has has bought into this. That said, uh, if this would be redundant for all participants as, as individuals, I mean, besides me, then uh, I I don't want to be, uh, you know, causing too much of like a, a waste of time. I, I do imagine that this would be valuable for more than just me, or I was imagining, because for one, this would then, because these meetings are, are recorded and published, serve as another learning resource for people trying to understand Cyclone DX. And uh, also, when when things grow over time, it you usually don't have a uh, an opportunity to look at at it as a whole. Uh, and then just the number of people who understand the whole thing decreases over time. At least I've seen that with other systems. Maybe it's different in this community. So I was, uh, the, the other thing is I, I do like the idea of breaking it up. It would be quite difficult for me as well to, to reserve a week. Um, and 
kind of the the smaller chunks, the 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 easier it is for at least for me personally. Um, I wouldn't necessarily be in quite a hurry to to finish this entirely by by April. Maybe doing it before the GA would be a more realistic target if we could do this in parallel with uh, the the opt out period. Uh, just given that it would be kind of a lot to schedule like 30 hours of content in the next, you know, two months. Uh, space and spacing it out will just probably make it easier for people. Anyway, uh, I if I, I would like to hear more feedback from other people in this group rather than just, you know, Steve and I saying that this is going to happen. Uh, if if nobody actually expresses interest in this, then we should, you know, maybe we'd reconsider whether it's the right plan. If I may make a comment, just it, it, it would be very valuable for ECMA if, if that process did take place. There, You're right, there isn't a lot of time. Uh, the GA is on the 26th, so you can stretch this deadline till the end of April almost, um, maybe the 24th of April so, when the exit Sorry, is. The, the 26th of which month? To, uh, sorry, the 26th of June is the GA. Okay, great. And and so if I work backwards and you have the 60-day opt-out period, if you could get a good core of the review done by that time, that would be very good. It would be very helpful. As you look for final approval at the GA, you want to have that type of due diligence and consensus amongst yourselves in the committee. So I leave others to comment on their opinion. So, uh, Lars, Ian, Matt, Keith, any thoughts? I've kept quiet because I'm officially just an observer. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm happy to do that exercise. Uh, yes, it is a lot of time, uh, but if it's helpful, and I have not spent uh, that much time with the entirety of the spec, it could be useful. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm more than familiar with the entirety of, of the spec, <laughs> so it, you know it would you know it's not helpful to me. So I'll, I'll defer to people who who need that insight. Uh, I think that taking it, you know, again looking at it at a high level, not every field necessarily, but looking at the the sections, the larger sections. Um, maybe we could even use the online JSON. Schema reference from Cyclone at OWASP. I think that's a good way to look at it. It's a nice graphical view that I refer. I have it always up in my browser. Um, it's better than looking at X XSD or JSON schema. So I would suggest that as a path forward. <laughs> yeah, I know, I Matt, for you that maybe. That, Matt, for you maybe you could be like a co-presenter of this. Would you be up for that? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm up always up for talking <laughs> about okay. S bomb about S bombs that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna push Matt back the, uh... on the idea of using the online schema though, because I, I think I think yeah, I imagine most of us are, I use that on a daily basis. I think my concern in doing that though is like how do we know that the thing that is being ratified is complete? And what is the thing that we're ratifying or, or we're voting on? It's the documentation that Steve has generated based on the JSON schema, right? And so how do we know the data is complete? Because that's ultimately what we are going to hold up as the truth. And so I think yeah, there's a lot of effort it, that well, should be put well, into reviewing that. Well, right? I'll just say that, you know, complete is a very generic word, complete relative to what use case. So, I mean, Cyclone I mean, we could be here a year talking about all the use cases that have been, you know, carefully described at Cyclone. It's a, it's a challenge, you know, taking a, as a lump sum all the stuff that's gone before for, that reflects years and years of thought and 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 things like that to, to get it right. But it, again, I think that something that's put it on previous calls, it, this spec is a living document. So it's been vetted by implementations and usage over the years. Uh, it's been vetted by the work groups. And the question is, do we have trust in those work groups or not? Um, and then, you know, making, you know, trying to marry the processes and I'll tighten the processes between OWASP Cyclone and this, this group here, tighten those processes, and increase that trust. And, you know, we, you know, I think that what's the correct amount of due diligence 
So I think that the danger in, in, now is doing an exercise that slows down the uh, the um, formal recognition of the spec at, at the ECMO level. I think that's the greatest danger for us to consider. So I'm gonna I'm gonna still push back, but I don't I'm not disagreeing with anything that you just said, Matt. What I'm saying is is that what we're ratifying is not the work that was done by OWASP and all of that. We're ratifying the work that Steve did to take that and translate it into another document. So I think there's a decent amount of due diligence we want to do on the document that Steve has generated that I don't think anyone on this call has reviewed. Steve gets all sorts of stuff in there. So that's, you know, that's, that's Steve. <laughs> well, all right, uh, so and, and making that, sure that that document. Yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't considering that nuance. So I, I, I have not looked at any new version of, of Cyclone that was that was presented. I've not looked at it. So my apologies. Yeah, Jan has do yeah. Jan has done some uh, some some QA checking on the document and has found some 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 issues. Some of those <laughs> issues have been corrected, but you're right. I mean it's the it's the document that we're putting forth. Um, there's going to be uh, so the part of this exercise is going to be QAing the document. Um, part of the exercise is going to be just kind of communicating and um, getting a broader understanding amongst the TC members of what the standard is and, and how it does what it what it does. Uh, what will not necessarily take place are any kind of changes, uh, especially ones that would be um, breaking backward compatibility, because we we just can't do that. Um, we can talk about some of the things that we might want to fix in the future when we can put those on the backlog for, for things to discuss at a future time. Um, and certainly there's there's things that uh, design decisions that I wish we would have done differently. Um, but again, we, we can't break the millions of organizations that are that have adopted the tools. Yeah, so I mean so what I'm hearing I lower, lower my hand is that we're trying to to verify the fidelity, of what's canonical in the schema published at Cyclone and is implemented in hundreds of tools potentially. Uh, and the, the a, a different document, a different in, incarnation of that information. So that's what we're trying to do, right? So. Uh, so I don't think we're only trying to verify the fidelity of the translation. We're also trying to have this shared understanding of the contents of the schema, of what the schema means. Uh, so there are two different goals. Yes, there are two different goals. I'm I'm expressing this broader goal, and I would like to make a group decision on whether we should adopt the broader goal. Uh, it doesn't. We don't. We don't have to make the decision that I'm advocating for, but this is what I'm what I'm proposing. Uh, the the. I I, I want to emphasize what Steve said. No changes to the schema or uh, would be made in this group. You know, we, we obviously would potentially change the way that that's translated into a document, but if the group identifies any issues with the schema, those would be sent to the community and the core team to investigate. Um, it would be inappropriate for this group to, to make changes. We're just not set up to you know, action, any kind of change. That's what those existing groups are for. Uh, but uh, due diligence over what the schema means is I think the core activity that standardization would consist of besides writing, writing the document. Yeah, and Matt, you know, I'll, I'll you know, um, you you know it probably uh, between me, Matt, and, and Jan. I think we're the ones on the on the working group that probably know it the best. I know Matt, for example, you've uh, you, you've written uh, pretty much the entirety of the entire formulation support. So I'll, I'll kind of rely on you to kind of guide us through that part of the standard. I mean, you know it better than I do. Um, so, um, so I think, I think we, if, if we break up, if we break up some of these days, uh, if, if we take, um, each one of us can take maybe a, a lead in terms of, um, you know, uh, what we want to present to the rest of the group. Uh, I think we can, uh, I think we can, uh, um, perform the due diligence, uh, in, in a, 
fairly uh, expedient way. Um, so, uh, Alyssa, uh, let's let's work together over the next, you know, um, couple days or whatever. I know it's Thursday, but you know, maybe Friday and Monday or something, and uh, we'll try to put together a doodle and and see if we can get uh, the majority of us kind of at the table. Sorry, Ian, uh, <laughs> were were you advocating for focusing on just due diligence over the the document or also on the meaning of the schema? I want to make sure that this isn't something that it's just like Steven, Samina, and I pushing for over the objections of everyone here uh, or something like uh, that. I, I see. Yeah, no, I see value in both objectives. Um, mm -hmm. I think helping support and get ensuring that the document matches the existing schema is kind of my, my, high, my high, highest priority. And then I think, to your point, validating it so then if there is any discrepancies and bring those back to the community to go work. Um, as like that, that quality gate, it would be a, a great idea as we as we think through it. But to your point, yeah. we this group wouldn't try to necessarily attack any of that without that community involvement. Yeah, I, yeah, I, definitely I, not. I, mean, I, agree, I agree with both goals. I think that we just need to create um, a realistic schedule for for doing both of those things. I mean, I just spent I just spent more than two months developing an internal presentation, going over the key use cases for Cyclone DX S-bombs and I'm still working on it. So I'm just saying that this exercise could, you know, you know, take a very long time. So we just have to be realistic and agree on a, a schedule. Oh, uh, that's great to hear. Do you think some of that could be made in an externalizable way? Maybe yeah, that my, adds a whole my, extra my, piece yeah, of work, my, but yeah, my hopefully some of it could be reused. Yeah, I mean, my plans is is to is to give it in the next few weeks IBM wide my corporation, and I was hoping that to look for conference opportunities to pro provide variants of this. But it's a very long deck. Even my deck, which is summarizes the top, you know, seven you know, five or six use cases, and then goes in more depth on C bomb and ML manufacturing bomb, the, the, uh, and ML bomb. Just that, and just providing the level set of uh, to lead up to that. Um, I've got. I'm looking at. I've got thirty nine pages. So I mean, that's a that's a, that's too much for you know a forty minute conference presentation. So it's you know it's got to be taken. You know, again, it's I like uh, Steve knows from day one what attracted to me Cyclone is addressing the content, the schema, uh, and the data, the information being conveyed in the SBOM relative to the use cases. And that's how I'm presenting it. But even so, it goes beyond an hour, even in, in a summation format. Well, that that's excellent because uh, that seems like the perfect starting point for a yeah. discussion here. Uh, because, you know, someone like me, I'm starting from zero and uh, I would really love to to hear that, and we don't have any inherent time limitations because we could we could just schedule a two hour call if that if that makes sense to go over it, and then post it to YouTube, and then any abbreviations for conferences would would also be a good compliment. But uh, you know, it, this is I'm uh, re regret to be like imposing, but I would but I would love to to see such an extended presentation. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're if you're good with it, Matt. I mean, we can um, once uh, Alyssa and I schedule this, we can certainly use. Um, you know, if you're willing, um, you can present that to the to the group just to kind of level set everybody, and then we can do the deep deep, deep dive in uh, into the documentation, hitting both the um, um, the paper documentation thing as well as the you know semantics of, of the specification itself. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. All right. Matt, this is Samina. Uh, would you want that initial slide deck that you would present to also be public, or do you want to just start first with the closer group? It, does that have any limitation for you because it's an IBM work? Like I said, I, I intend to make it public, um, but I'm, I'm just worried about undermining my own chances at getting in at conferences if it's published in its entirety elsewhere. So. <laughs> Okay, understood. Uh, but really, would this undermine it? I mean, it would. You, a conference talk would be done in it in like a different way from 
anyway, that, that's that's up to you to 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 make a call on. Um, so I it would be good to have input from this group on uh, maybe the the chunking and scheduling so input that then that would go to you know Stephen and Alyssa in figuring out how to schedule this. Like personally, if this could be in like maximum two two to three hour chunks then that would be kind of easiest for me uh i don't know how other people feel and then uh or what what is it that you were imagining steve uh, in terms of meetings i mean it, this is this is going to this is going to take a while um you know my calendar as it is it's really difficult to get an hour let alone five so um yeah well, i'm gonna have to move things around because I, I i have zero availability to do this um so but there's a lot of content to go through and you know the cyclone as, as matt mentioned um is is very use case driven and even in the security space there are tons and tons of, of use cases license use case, many, many license use cases, not just open source, right? Um, so we're all very use case driven and the specification has grown since its origin in 2017. And, um, you know, there's probably very few of us that actually know the entirety of the specification. Um, so there, there's a lot to go through. It's kind of like reviewing like the JavaScript language, right? the entirety of the JavaScript language, right? That's kind of what the ask is. Uh, it's a lot to go through. Okay. But, um, well, yeah, I'm, uh, again, yeah. I'll say I'm, I'm happy to present my my stuff to to this group and make, you know, make a readable copy, not hopefully not down, not downloadable, but maybe online viewable copy available, but it will have, I'll keep preserve the IBM copyright at the, uh, if that's possible. Uh, sure. As long as, you know, uh, uh, that, yeah, I don't think there's any required licensing of such material. I think yeah, so so, this was sorry. sorry Daniel I think in order to start this discussion and to have an overview uh, Matt your work would be extremely useful I do not think it'll be a problem on a copyright issue from a general presentation to give everybody a very broad overview with some level of depth I'm sure in your presentation on what everything is we can go the next steps after we have that understanding. So if we could have that first meeting, and if that needs to be two hours, that I know everybody has a very busy schedule, it would be extremely helpful. It would it would give us an opportunity to give an understanding and bring everybody to a certain playing field. Thank you. Okay, cool. I'll be happy to do Sorry. that. Also, I want we've we've been saying two hours, but you know, you you set the length at whatever, whether it's longer or shorter than that, as as, yeah. as works for you. Um, should we go through the uh, promotions? Yeah, absolutely. We've got and three of them Sorry, to Steve, just one comment. Um, um, it is noted in the minutes, in, in the agenda, that this is a 30-minute meeting, but it's actually an hour, just that everybody's aware. Ah, just wanted I will to, change that, yes. No, no problem, <laughs> just that we are continuing, that's all. All right, very good. Um, we've got three promotions to go through. Um, all three are pretty simple, so it... it these obvious, these should not take too long. Um, the first one is decoupling the metadata from the component. Um, let's see, Jan, do you want to do you want to go through through this, uh, focusing primarily on the JSON schema documentation because yeah. that's really what we're interested in here. Okay, could we start with um, the broad overview I've written in the discussion of the sure. podcast, so everybody is aware what we are gonna be seeing um, the broader goal was um, to to make some things right while also adding new value <laughs> um, and the scope is the metadata of the of the s bomb while also being the, the scope um, the component subgroups 
as we all know, um, in the metadata, we also have a component which describes the thing that's described by the SBOM, but the component data model is also used for the components of that component that's described as subcomponents or whatever you would call them. So we will see changes in the model of the component and in the metadata. And basically, you can read what, what the goal is here, and we could quickly go through the changes and you could check if you find the things that you thought you would find by reading this. So yeah, let's go to the JSON doc. So we've got the manufacturer field. Yeah, um, the man we had a manufacturer without the ER at the end. Um, it was a typo in the past and it had another goal than the actual manufacturer. And we found out we need a manufacturer of the bomb. So far, we had a manufacturer of the co core component, the root component, the parent component, whatever you would call it. And we, since we have a manufacturer, we could introduce a manufacturer of the component at component level already. We could deprecate the old manufacturer, uh, which was called manufacturer, and instead add a manufacturer, which shouldn't be confused because they have different descriptions and goals. Right. So this is. So in general, yeah. we're, we're deprecating the, the old one, which was basically a typo. We're deprecating that. Um, uh, so backward compatibility would not be affected. We're adding it um, the, the correct spelling. And we're, we're making sure that the description actually represents what it is that we that we really want to do. Yeah. Uh, I think the title is the most relevant part that you could glimpse on. It's the one is the bomb wow. manufacturer, the other is the component manufacturer. And we're deprecating right. the component manufacturer because we can represent this data in another way now. And still, yeah, we get the new value that we had. Okay. Um, and scrolling down, now we are on the components level where I introduced that manufacturer. So could we could have component manufacturer, the one that was represented with the legacy old now a deprecated data model. And since a manufacturer is only representing manufacturing, meaning automation process and co and so on, we also needed authors. We had author an author in the past, which was just a string. And we had the issue that people were requesting multiple authors and there was it was unclear how to um, delimiter them like putting if you have multi, multiple authors or additional author data like an email address website etc so this was added so we could have multiple authors now the old author is deprecated and we could have manufacturers and most important part at that point is the description where it points out the use cases right so the big change here is that again we're deprecating the author which was a string single string field uh, Jan has added an authors, which is an array. And instead of being a string field, it's a, it's a properly structured object. So you've got name, email address, that sort of thing. So any questions on what it is that this change in documentation um, is intended to do? Oh, uh, not, not exactly a question on that, but what is the deprecation policy for Cyclone DX as far as how long this would be expected to stay in the spec as deprecated? Um, until version two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going major, yeah. mainly with the semantic versioning um, idea. Major versions might have breaking changes, including dropping deprecated fields or anything else, but we are backwards compiled compatible with each minor version or bug fix. Yep, makes sense. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, backward compatibility is, is really important to us. Uh, we, we do not concentrate so much on forward compatibility. I'm not, I'm not aware of any spec that guarantees forward compatibility. But yeah, backward compatibility is really important, uh, especially given the sheer amount of, of tools and adoption th that the specification has. Um, so with that, let's go to the, uh, any objections for, um, 
uh, including this in, in 1.6. Oh, sounds good. Okay. Um, if you look into the details, not very important for now, but important for me in the future, I need to do several follow-up tasks. So this includes ex especially the backwards compatibility drop in version 2.0, as you can see in the follow-up tasks. But um, we will also put that, I will put that into the SBOM guide to point out how to use it in the future. Okay. Yeah, we need to revisit the SBOM guide, but that's outside of the scope of ECMA. Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, this, 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 this change is basically to add support for uh, security.txt, which is essentially, you know, a way to describe how you would report a security incident to, for example, an open source project. Um, so there's a, a there's a formal RFC for this RFC 9116 that actually uh, describes the syntax and formatting of security.txt files that you would find in a typical repository. Uh, the ask was to really uh, add support for this in, um, this was an external reference type, right, uh, Jan? Um, yep. In the alternatives we discussed, uh, we could use the existing security contact, which we already have, which mm -hmm already describes certain aspects of um, putting information in there, like an email address, a telephone number, which we could um, find by looking at a schema, which is mail to double uh, is mail to colon email address or tell colon phone number. Or it could be a, a DNS, which is just an IP address in either way. So we would know what you are dealing with, but if we put in a URL, a path you wouldn't so this solution is preferred to have a specific own um, type of external reference right. that you can be sure whatever the schema is whether it's path or whatever you know at that location i can find that document and i can parse it the way it's described in the rfc so this is uh this is the description for the external reference that we're adding and Jan, this was a request from uh, uh, the German BSI, right? Yes. Yes. And indirectly, they they mentioned that okay. they might need such a thing, and we were just like, "Well, that's yeah, allowing food." Okay. Um, with that, is there any objections to including uh, support for RFC ninety one sixteen in Cyclone one six? All right, I don't hear any objections, so we will, um, let's see, promote the TC, where's the other ones for TC? Reviewed and accepted, okay. Okay, and that brings us to the final uh, issue that we have the original ask was to uh, add support for a quote unquote category field for representing machine learning models. Um, the original ask was really about um, trying to align Cyclone DX to uh, uh, third party repositories of models such as Hugging Face. Um, however, the concept of a category and the way it's implemented in um, in, uh, in, in in hugging face, it's it's really just a tag. Um, and the great thing is that we actually already have support for Cyclone DX, uh, for tags in Cyclone DX, specifically for release notes, because Cyclone is also a common release notes uh, format. So we've added uh, uh, support for tags uh, for both uh, components and services. Um, and I will kind of review Let's see, where's the JSON schema definition for that? So um, tags, again, this can be applied to either a component or a service. 
It is an array of strings. Uh, this is the description. Textual strings aid in discovery, search, and retrieval of the associated object. Tags often serve as a way to group or categorize similar or related objects by various attributes. And um, I excuse me, provided some examples uh, there as well, uh, a couple of which are, are specific to machine learning. Yeah, as you can see, we had that already, as Steve said, it's the red part where it was the old position and it now just moved and was cross-referenced so we could reuse yeah. it. And you could also see there are no breaking changes, which I would love to see, but we can't make it the, the tags being unique in the list. So, of course, it wasn't that way in the past. So we are not adding that. So this is our current after. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make a note and as you can read some of this discussion perhaps is that, you know, these tags don't just have to be, um, void of, of domain or namespace. You could use a URN or URI as a value sure. as well. And that's the, that's a, actually a path we've a lot, we've discussed at many points in time at endorsing, uh, going forward. So, uh, and, but to having the, having a discrete tag reference clearly indicates what the purpose is, which is basically creating domain specific, um, names or adding them to a specific area of the spec. In this case, it yeah. serves its purpose well. Yeah, you're right. I totally forgot we had that discussion that people were using um, component proper components properties in the past mm -hmm. to, to double as tags, but now we have components tags as well for them. It's not yeah. a, and services tags. Tags. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I think one of the um... I think one of the uh, test examples, I think I I had, um, so yeah, I've got tags on a component right here and then tags on a service as well. So that's kind of how you could theoretically use this. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity for that. Deposit. So it's not lost on, on everyone here. So when we say component, this also goes back to the original um, you know, uh, a, a data component, a model is a, is a component. Yes, exactly. So it fulfills that original ask from that, uh, um, from that individual in the, in the issue, wanting a category thing to kind of align with, you know, what hugging face does from a machine learning model perspective. And you're right, because, um, models are just another type of component. Um, we get that for free for, for the ML, and we get the ability to represent tags for everything else, hardware, software, services, et cetera. All right, any, any objection to adding uh, support for tags in 1.6? All right, let's go ahead and uh, mark this. Oh, no objection, minutes. sounds good. Okay, very good. Appreciate the support on these, uh, on these issues. And that brings us to the end. Um, I, don't, I do not have any more agenda items. So um, if anyone has any new business they, they wanna bring up, we do have 15 minutes uh, remaining. Otherwise, we can give uh, folks some time back. Nothing is. Uh, one, one thing that uh, we discussed in the past was forming a TG for Perl. Uh, and so I think this is a topic for a future meeting, but hopefully soon we can, um, with with Philip here, we could charter such a TG. And I don't know, wanted to ask if anybody has any thoughts or, or concerns. There, there are kind of three things to standardize there. One is the core syntax. One is the, the version range syntax. And then the third is is sort of the, the registry of uh, different, um, 
package managers and how the, that data is maintained. The third one obviously has to be easily updatable over time. So it's less clear how that will work. Anyway, um, the, the kind of leadership of this group was thinking that a TG would be a good way to go forward. I just wanted to mention that. And just to define what a TG is, it is a task group that is under this technical committee. So they work closely and in hand with the work that you're doing. Yeah, thank you. We we have the power to like convene subcommittees and it's just an official subcommittee. So. Yeah, I'm all for that. And, and to, to get it in the record for everybody to hear is that, you know, um, two things regarding pearls. Um, one is I want to raise awareness that it's been, it's been many years, but the, um, OCI artifacts, which does have a recommendation for images, for images, image artifacts for a pearl, but that's been ratified for all metadata artifacts as well. So I think that if the, you know, we, we should enliven the discussion to see what IETF and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is doing because they're defying SBOM as one of those artifacts. And if we should, you know, increase the recommendations on how Perl should look for these OCI artifacts for one. And the, the thing that haunts me is the question of how do um, private companies uh, use Perls internally? So I, I've not found really any good recommendations on that. So I think looking at producing a recommendation document would be highly valuable. Mm. Uh, so another that would be thing a that, good sorry. topic for the TG then, right? Yeah, that's my thinking, yeah. Okay. Uh, and another thing that we've run into within Bloomberg is uh, how we should, uh, well, how we should kind of combine pearls on one hand for, for new things, but also uh, references to older software systems from CVEs. And it seems like it could be useful to have a single namespace for those. Sorry, Dennis, I think you, Dennis could probably clarify further. I may be misstating the, the requirements. Uh, and hopefully that's something we can discuss either, either in the TG or just in the open source project. Yeah, very valid point. I was just about to unmute myself for that. Um, Without any technical details, very big plus one on what Matt just said. It would be very interesting to identify these synergies um, and to give companies uh, sort of guidance on how to use pearls. So I'm, I'm all for the, the TG there. Um, plus, I also wanted to mention earlier, I'm, I'm very much for the technical review. Um, I'm just a spectator on this, similar to Lars, but I'm very happy to uh, participate and uh, uh, take the time to review things because I think you guys uh, came up with like an amazing spec here so far, but it's just fair uh, to review it and to give it like a second pair of eyes or six pair of eyes. Seems like we're seems like we're talking about adding the fourth pair of eyes if there are like exactly three <laughs> people who understand the whole spec right now, right? That's that's basically what I'm joking on. I, I actually, um, um, Steve, you were mentioning earlier that um, your your time is a little short. Um, I wonder to what degree it would make sense to do this like async, as you are one of the original writers. Um, do you have to put two hours or three hour or five hour time slots aside to just, you know, sit in on a review of something that you've written yourself? I don't know. Maybe there's a way for us to structure that differently. I'm um, just putting it out there since we have the time. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't need to review Cyclone. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm probably one of a handful full that actually know the entirety of the spec. Um, but, um, you know, I think I need to, for the most part, be there because I do have all that knowledge and uh, most people don't. So, um, yeah. Um, you know, I think the goal is to kind of elevate everybody's level of, of competency in the spec so that they have a, a broader understanding. So uh, I'll, you know, I'll just try to shift things around. Um, yeah, Perl is 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 great. Um, uh, I've got a uh, I've got an action item on on my side to kind of reach out to uh, uh, Philippe uh, with a number of different 
things that uh, you know we discussed the other day, but uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll kind of let them know that you know what our line of thinking is in terms of forming a TG for this, um, and, um, and and yeah, I, I'd like to get this started. Uh, that way, whatever the the TG kind of recommends in terms of like. Uh, um, you know, next specs can be pre presented to us as um, as as the TC, right? Um, so, if for folks that are interested in in talking about um, Perl at the technical group level, um, that's those are those conversations will be separate, independent of of, of this meeting. Um, if you're obviously if you're interested in participating in the Perl TG, uh, I would highly encourage you to do so. Uh, but um, the output from that TG will eventually be, be presented here. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Daniel. And I also have an action item to talk to Philippe about um, a possible uh, recommendation document. And uh, Matt pointed out a, a lack of guidance on using pearls for internal components is just one recommend, uh, is one observation. And I think that's a valid point. Um, to give a short answer to the last question, Philippe always says, if it's an internal component, it has no pearl. <laughs> of course, pearl is about public things. But, um, actually, no, he's, he's actually that's I, if that's what his position is, I, I would actually disagree with that. I yeah. disagree. Uh, as... I disagree as well. I disagree as well. In <laughs> fact, so yeah, for... I hope I understood him wrong. I love to, <laughs> to see a written text telling me I'm wrong. <laughs> I understood. It's really wrong. about component. It's really about two things, component identity and location. And the location certainly can be public. Uh, but location in, in a lot of cases is going to be an organization's internal repository somewhere. Yes, that's what they oh, have qualifiers yeah. for, especially, I know. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, fundamentally. Yeah, I was definitely imagining using Pro more broadly for, because we have a number of different internal repositories in Bloomberg that things refer to. I don't know. Yeah, we're we're looking to leverage Pearl and actually incorporate legacy ident identifiers in a Perl format, basically. Oh. I tell you, people are talking about SBOF bloat today. They will talk about Perl bloat in the future, <laughs> where they have like two uh, two thousand characters long Perls or something with all the qualifiers in it because they can. So, so far, yeah. we only have two two very long identifiers, but I, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking because Philippe always tells me don't use long pearls, they must be short. <laughs> Remove that yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree. Um, yeah, I think there's only, I think it's one of the re reasons why, I think there's only like four or five like reserved qualifiers. All these other ones for pearl types, they're all kind of optional and specific to the pearl type. But yeah, we need to kind of keep those concise. And, you know, I, I know we don't have a lot of, you know, in terms of a Perl spec, you can actually have short pearls, but in terms of the Perl types, maybe that's something that we need to figure out as well. Like, um, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to be able to represent a component um, succinctly, I guess, um, in, in a given ecosystem. It's kind of another thing to kind of go overboard to the point where you have these 2000 character uh, pearls. So maybe that's something we also consider when we start talking about pearl types, because, you know, we have the question of a registry, um, but we also have the question of just trying to make them as short and succinct as possible, trying to prevent the, the bloat that we just chuckled about. <laughs> I think that once you've adopted the basic syntax, basically query parameters, uh, it's going to be hard to put that genie back in the bottle. Yeah. I'm also kind of curious how things like uh, when we have, and many organizations have their 
their private downstream NPM artifactory installation, which is mostly a mirror, but then not completely. Uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, that's that's an easy use case. It just needs to be publicly documented. I think it already is. Um, the default re registry is already mentioned, and there's a qualifier for a custom registry. And as long right. as you're putting that in, you're golden. Yeah, but again, okay, you know, great. having a recommendation guide would be, or some a recommendation section in the spec, whatever we decide to do, right? Um, I, it, it's such a common use case that we, we do a lot of probably, yeah. We do a lot of resolving of, of pearls against internal registries and we never put them into the actual um, qualifiers, sort of an external understanding when you're processing an SBOM of the priority of whether you check the default registry or internal registries for it. And it seems to work pretty well for us. Yeah. And we also often similar. Same here. Yeah. We, we do something similar based on the namespace. So if the namespace is, you know, com.servicenow, we'll note to lurk, you know, in a specific repository versus something else. Yep. Same here. Yeah. I mean, as you mentioned it, this is a common feature in some, in most of the tools I've worked um, with that could mm. work with pearls. You have such a flag for, for a, a pattern for internals and they get treated separately from the, the public ones. I mean, yes. it's, a, it's a feature dependency track already. Oh. And that's just one tool that's using it like that, I guess. Where, where, it, gets, where it gets tricky though, is, is that like, for example, we use GitHub Enterprise. And there's like <laughs> GitHub. <laughs> so there is a Perl for Git. So, you know, how, you know, it, that gets very confusing then, right? That goes back to recommendations. Um, right. So, and I have to point out that products often, you know, for packages, it might work great. A package is in a single repository, but a product might span a dozen or more <laughs> repositories, right? So recommendations would be yes. good. Okay. Well, I will, uh, I'll reach out to uh, Philippe and I got a lot of stuff to go over with him. So I'll, um, I'll update the group uh, once I have those conversations. Um, any last minute, um, things we've got two minutes left. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank uh, you. They, uh, appreciate the support in these promotions today. Uh, listen, and I will, we'll get back to everyone on the doodles and, uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Good meeting. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.